Johnson Wax Program. The makers of Johnson's Wax present Marion and Jim Jordan as Faber McGee and Molly. Ted Weems and his orchestra open the show with a new tune from the picture Swing Time, Mr. Bojangles of Harlem. <laughs> go on with the show, I want to remind you that now is the time to make your floors and linoleum beautiful as new with Johnson's Glow Coat. Until you've actually tried this remarkable no-rubbing floor polish, you can't possibly know how easy it is to apply. You merely spread Glow Coat lightly over the linoleum or floor with a soft cloth or the special Glow Coat applier. You don't have to bear down or rub it in. Glow Coat dries in 20 minutes to a beautiful polish that sheds dirt and dust and saves you hours of cleaning time. No matter how dull and dingy your linoleum looks now, Glow Coat will quickly change it to a bright, shining surface. Glow Coat is made by the makers of Johnson's Wax. Look for the attractive yellow can with the lettering G-L-O hyphen C-O-A-T. Johnson's Glow Coat. <laughs> Well, Fibber McGee's sporting blood pressure has gone up to the point where nothing will satisfy him but a visit to the racetrack. Molly has very reluctantly consented to come along. So here, standing in front of the grandstand at the gorgeous, wistful vista racetrack upside down, we find Fibber McGee and Molly. Ain't you glad you come out now, Molly? Oh, this is a beautiful track. Look at the nice park in the middle there. And look at the swans in the lagoon. Yeah. And look at the geese in the grandstand. <laughs> Why don't you go to the stables and take a gander at the goats? Who are you, brother? I'm an ex jockey mister. And I've got some swell inside tips, too. You an ex jockey <laughs> Why, you must weigh about 300. <laughs> you must have been an elephant jockey with Barnum. <laughs> Listen, mister... I've got a natural in the next race, right from the feed box. Go away and let us lead our own lives. Yeah. We already had three tips right from the feed box, and none of them could have been farther from the truth. Oh. <laughs> Don't you get it, Molly? I said, hey. Ain't funny, Mr. Okay. <laughs> what you got in the next race is so hot, bud. Hey, Mama Dion, the place. Mama Dion. Hmm. She's a famous mother. <laughs> We don't 
don't need no help picking our horses. Okay, okay. But you'll be sorry. I had five winners yesterday. Yeah, that's when you guys always have them. Yesterday. <laughs> you're no prophet. You're a historian. All right. All right. If you know so much... I wonder if he really did have some inside information, McGee. Go on, Molly. He couldn't get inside information with an X-ray. <laughs> the horses are on the track. The mutuals will close in about five minutes. Have you got a horse you want to play in this race, McGee? Well, I kind of like this horse, Leather Minion. Leather Minion? Mm -hmm. She's a tough little filly. Oh. <laughs> the way I bet, Molly, I follow the form. Yes? I figure on how the nag's been running lately, yes. how much the jockey weighs, yes. whether the horse is wearing blinkers or not, yes. the condition of the track, and how many hay burners there are in the race. Yes. Then I look at the odds to see how it stands in the betting. Mm -hmm. And then I pull out my money... Yes, yes. ...and buy myself a hot dog. I love horses. <laughs> Look now, McGee, here at the, these next two races, mm -hmm. I'd like to bet Boo in the fourth and Prance in the fifth. A man over there told me it was a good parlay. I see. You're going to parlay Boo and Prance. Mm -hmm. We will. <laughs> Won't you walk into my parlay, said the spider to the chump. <laughs> he gave me soldering iron for a hot tip, too. The horses are at the post. The mutuals will close in one minute. Incidentally, McGee, just what is a parlay? Well, ain't that a woman for you? She's going to play a parlay because she heard somebody talking about it, and she wants to know what it is. Ah, <laughs> oh, you kill me, Molly. <laughs> That's an idea, but wait till after this race. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what a parlay is. You have a friend, see, and he tells you to play a horse in the first race, and that horse wins. Then he tells you about a horse in the second race. So you take what you win on the first race and bet it on the second race. That's a parlay. That's just what I thought it was. But what if you don't win on the first race? <laughs> Then it's parlay your fault and parlay your friend's fault. <laughs> the horses are at the post. Ah, my mistake. At Ted Wien's orchestra. And they're off. find Molly trying to console him. Oh, maybe you'll have better luck in the next race. <laughs> oh, come on. Let's hunt up a hot dog. The results of the last race are official. Say, how can they be sure which horse wins when it's a close finish, McGee? See that little coop up there, Molly? Yes. On top of the grandstand? You know what that is? Sure, that's a pigeon coop. So they can send a message to the horses you bet on. No. <laughs> that's a camera house. That's the eye in the sky. They take a picture of every finish that's in doubt. Well, there's no doubt about the finish on your car when you protect it with Johnson's Auto Wax. <laughs> hey, Harpo. Yes? Do I look like a horse? Well, let me see. Well, no, not very much. Well, quit riding me, then. <laughs> oh. Now, here we are, Molly. Two hot dogs, sis. Yes, sir. Here you are, sir. There's mustard in the bowl. Okay. How much? Seventy cents. Thirty-five apiece. Heavenly days. Thirty-five cents for a hot dog. We don't want them with pedigree, sis. A couple of mutts would do. <laughs> so that's the regular price, sir. Thirty-five cents apiece. Oh, boy. Here's ten bucks. Give me some ketchup. McGee, <laughs> don't be like that. When in Rome, do as the Romans do. It's okay. I wouldn't mind being rimmed by a Roman, but I hate to get tricked at the track. <laughs> Here you are, sis. Seventy cents. <laughs> Who pays your next year's rent? Oh, forget it, McGee. Oh. We come out here for fun, didn't we? Sure we did. I was just wondering who figures the odds on the concessions out here. Begging your pardon, lad, but will you move over and let me at the mustard? Oh, excuse me, Scotty. <laughs> I didn't see you buy a hot dog. No, nah, and you won't either, lad. I brought my own sandwiches. Uh, hand me a paper napkin, please, lad. Well, of all the nerves. Here. Thank you. You didn't bring your own horse and jockey, too, did you, mister? <laughs> 
No, but I'm a winner on the last race. Yeah? What horse, Scotty? I had Fun Dancer to show. Oh, she paid $2.80. <laughs> well, even so, you made 80 cents. No, lass, 8 cents. 8 cents? But it paid 80 cents on a $2 ticket. Aye, but there were 10 of us in on it. Oh. <laughs> there was you for a glass of water, lass. Okay. And the mustard makes me very... Heavenly day. Can you imagine that? <laughs> Well, I suppose it takes a close race to win a close race. <laughs> I'll see the lineup for the next one, Molly. Here, I picked Rabbit Hound to win. Can't play him, Molly. Rabbit Hound was scratched this morning. Well, I thought maybe he'd be healed up enough to run by now. <laughs> when a horse is scratched, they take him out of the race. For a little thing like that? Like what? Like being scratched. Well, Molly, they don't take a horse out because he's scratched. I mean, they do, of course, but it isn't on account of... Well, that it... when a horse... <laughs> you hear that, Molly? She's got business. She thinks she... <laughs> What's the business, sis? Question, mister. Yeah? I got a good one in the next race for an ice cream cone, I bet you. <laughs> now, listen. Can we do business? <laughs> no, I, I don't believe so. But here's a nickel for your ice cream cone, anyway. Oh, I guess you don't know much about racetracks, mister. Huh? Ice cream cones cost two bits around here. Oh. <laughs> Okay, here's a quarter. Thanks, mister. Just for that, you better get on tiddlywinks for the next race. <laughs> what makes you think so, sis? Well, the boy that rides him told his sister, uh -huh. and she borrowed my doll buggy this morning, and she gave me the tip, I betcha. Oh, I see. <laughs> and say, so here's another, mister. What's that? Play Elmo Tanner to place in this next number. So long, mister. wonder millions of housekeepers are so enthusiastic about Johnson's Glow Coat. This easy-to-use, no-rubbing floor polish dries in 20 minutes to a beautiful polish without rubbing or buffing. Glow Coat keeps linoleum and floors sparkling and clean, seals the cracks and pores so dirt can't penetrate. Soiled spots can be quickly wiped off the shining surface. Use Glow Coat tomorrow on your kitchen linoleum and see what a difference it will make in the looks of the whole room. And then... As time goes by, you'll find how easy your cleaning work will be. Johnson's Glow Coat gives brighter luster, longer wear. And by the way, you save money by ordering Glow Coat in the larger sizes. Well, it's almost time for the next race. And while Fibber is scientifically figuring the odds and calculating past performances, Molly is praying for a good hunch. In other words, Fibber is doping and Molly is hoping. 
You know, McGee, I still wonder if I hadn't ought to put something on alarm clock. Oh, go on, Molly. Why, that horse is so nearly ready for the glue factory, he's sick to the track. <laughs> well, don't you even think he might show? The only thing he could show is a set of wobbly footprints. Lay off alarm clock now, Molly. I'm telling you, and I know my horses. Why, well, I mind the time I had me a small stable down in New Orleans. Oh, small, yes. but good. Oh. I had me the sweetest little string of thoroughbreds ever waved the eyelash. I was trainer, manager, jockey, veterinarian, and everything else. Turf Topper McGee, I was known as in them days. Oh. Turf Topper McGee, the titanic trainer of trotters and tireless teacher of track tactics. <laughs> Why, well, I mind the time, Molly, when my best horse was a little mare named... She was a little mare named... Uh, let's see now, what was that mare's name again? LaGuardia. I says mare, not mayor. Here we go. I'm going to place a bet to get even. Who do you like in this race? Oh, I've got a bet on alarm clock. Do you hear that, McGee? Huh? Did you hear that? I'll bet that alarm clock will win hands down. No, no. No, <laughs> sir. That nag hasn't got a chance, I'm telling you, Molly. Now, I got a horse. The horse is on all the track. Oh, come on, Molly. Let's go down to the stables a minute. Maybe I can check up on my bet before I lay the dough down. All right, but who's the horse? It's a little mare named Lily. She's in the field. <laughs> From the dope sheet, she's all set to win and win big. She ain't been worked hard lately. Lily of the field. Yep. Hmm. She toils not, neither does she win. <laughs> well, the odds on her ought to be kind of... Oh, hi there, bud. Oh, I, I see you got on an owner's badge. Yes, yes, my little horse, fellas. I am an owner, sir. Horatio K. Boomer. Colonel Boomer to you, sir. One of the old Kentucky Boomers. Well, how do you do, I'm sure. Uh, I'm Fibber McGee, Colonel. One of the old Peoria Lower End McGee. <laughs> yes, sir. Very glad to meet you. Sorry you weren't here a moment ago. I had a fine chance to make you a lot of money. I'm interested in money myself. Oh, you're not. No, my little nag wag, I'm not. <laughs> Colonel Boomer is only interested in improving the breed of horse flash. The Boomers have always been racing men. Racing here, racing there, just one jump ahead. What was of... that big chance to make dough, bud? <laughs> oh, it was just a little personal matter. Just a chance to clean up a fortune is all. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll be on the Hey, way. wait a minute, Colonel. Uh, hey, what's he talking about? Oh, just a trifle, a trifle. You see, I have a little filly out there on the... The horses are nearing the post. The mutuals will close in about three minutes. Ah, oh, yes, three minutes. Too late, too late. Too late for what? Well, now that you insist, my little mutual friends, I'll tell you. My little filly out there is due to win this race, and the odds are 100 to 1 on her. I didn't get a chance to bet myself. Left my checkbook at my hotel. Hot dog, you hear that, Molly? 100 to 1. We ought to get something down on that. Oh, it seems like taking advantage of the colonel, McGee. Oh, not at all, not at all. Very glad to give you the information. Sorry I'm in such temporary financial straits myself. I'm very sorry. Well, so am I, bud. Woo. A hundred to one. McGee, why don't you lend the colonel some money and let him bet, too? Oh, no. Thank you, my dear. No, thank you. I, I couldn't think of it. No, Im impossible, you know. Perfect strangers, you know. But if you insist, I, uh, <laughs> I would accept a small loan. Be very glad to give you my note, of course. Yes, of course. How much you got with you, Molly? Eighteen dollars. Here it is. Uh, thanks. Let's see. I got about, let's see now, thirty-two. That makes fifty. Uh, suppose I put down 25 for you and 25 for us, Colonel. At 100 to 1, that'll be something. Well, sir, I take that very kindly of you, sir. Yes, sir. But let me give you my note. Now, let me see. Where's my 24-carat uh, solid gold fountain pen? <laughs> uh, must have left that at the hotel, too. Well, here's a short pencil. Let me see. Now. Uh, I owe you $25. Horatio K. Boomer. There you are, my boy. Hurry and make your bath. And may the best horse win. No, no. Let our horse win, madam. <laughs> okay, Colonel. See you later. We got to hurry to make that... Hey, Colonel. By the way, what's that horse's name? Oh, yes. My baby. My baby. My baby on the nose, my friend. My we baby. can't lose. Or I can't anyway. Yes. My baby the on the nose. The horses are nearing the post. My baby on the nose. Come on, Molly. My baby on the nose. We got to get this bet down before the window closes. Here you are. A uh, fifty-buck ticket on my baby's nose, bud. Okay. There you are, mister. Fifty bucks on my baby to win. Good, my baby. Now let's go and watch her come in, Molly. Oh, dear, and I haven't even a dime left to play my hunch. Oh, never mind the hunches, Molly. This is the real stuff. Oh, boy, a hundred to one. 
We ought to clear a couple of thousand apiece on this. Oh, I know, but I've got a feeling, McGee, that alarm clock might have been. The horses are at the post. McGee. What? McGee, what if we should lose? Go on. <laughs> we can't lose. Didn't the colonel say it was in the bag? My baby. Hello. Come on, my baby. My baby. My baby. And off to a good start. Straight car is on the outside. Come on, my baby. Alarm clock trailing by four lengths. Come on, my baby. My baby creeping along in the bunch. Come on, my baby. Now they're on the far turn. Now my baby is crawling up. Hot dog, Molly. We're in. Look at my baby run. And after three quarters. Come on, my baby. Alarm clock is coming up. Where's my baby? Where's my baby? <laughs> Here no. I am. Oh, the other horse. What? The horse. Where's my baby? Oh, dear, oh, dear. I can't see. There's so much dust. They're in the stretch. And alarm clock is coming up on the outside. Come on, my baby. They're nearing the finish. Where's my baby? Street car is slowing down. Come on, my baby. And alarm clock wins by half a length. It's alarm clock. Jay Walker is second, and Streetcar is third. Heavenly days, McGee. Where's that Colonel Boomer that gave us the bum tip? Yes, yeah, the dirty little. Ah, oh, there he goes sneaking through the crowd. Hey, there. Colonel Boomer, where's my baby? Yeah, yeah just what I was asking myself. Haven't the slightest idea what happened. Mm. Well, I have. We're busted. Well, I can't imagine what happened to my baby. Ah, oh, here she comes. Uh, off that horse, boy. Put that blanket on her. Don't want it to catch cold. You think she could? Mm. <laughs> ah, there, my baby. You tried, all right. You tried. Yes, yes. Oh, well. We can't always win, you know. What do you mean, always? Yes, and how about our $25? Yeah, bud. What you gonna do about that? Well, there's only one thing to do for the honor of the Kentucky Boomer, sir. Sure. Give us our 25 bucks. No. I'll give you the horse. The horse? Heaven's <laughs> sake. We don't want your horse. Hey, what's the idea, Boomer? Here you are. Take good care of her. It breaks my heart to see her go, but needs must for the double fly. Hey, come back here. You can't do that. We don't want this horse. <laughs> <laughs> well, looks like we bought us a horse, Molly. Yes, and what are we going to do with the horse? What are we going to do with him? We'll take him home. Maybe we can sell him to the fire department. Heavenly day. Well, come on, McGee. We'll have to walk home. Come on, my baby. Let's go. <laughs> well, how far is it to town, McGee? Only eight miles. Eight miles. Hmm. McGee. Hmm? What say, Molly? Step back alongside of the horse, McGee. Oh, there, my baby. Like this, Molly? Back farther. Like this? No, back farther. Here? There. My, my. A remarkable resemblance. Linoleum floors are very fashionable linoleum these days. Floors. The colors add brightness to any room. And if you know how to take care of linoleum floors, you can keep them looking like new with practically no effort. Here's the secret. Protect your linoleum at once with Johnson's Glow Coat. This easy-to-use floor...